Right, so welcome back to yet another installment of Master Fade 5. Uh, just checking that it's definitely recording. Yes, we are. And we're in business. Right, okay, so. Um, so yesterday we did a video where we focused on uh, the live streaming aspects of uh, setting up. And we had a little bit of a setup going on down here. You know, we'd named the channels. We'd sort of uh, added a few features uh, using the... Um, one of my more my more favorite uh, uh, features of Master Fade, and hang on a second, I'm just gonna go on to my yeah, I was just lowering the gain. Um, I can hear it uh, booming a little bit there. So yeah, we we talked about one of my more favorite features, uh, um, and we only talked about it because I, I did all the setup in the background. But it was really straightforward because I used the quick assign uh, where you just sort of send things down across uh, whatever it is you want to send across. You know, you've got the icons. What did we put down there? Viola? Uh, which one? I always get. I think this is the violin, isn't it? Uh, lead Vox. We had a lady lead Vox yesterday, so today we'll have a dude. Colors. I'll pick the more hideous uh, colors. You see, the colors really look bad when they're up here. Um, but then once you actually bring them down, it's like, oh, you know, they're, they're not that bad. I mean, that one's terrible. Not that bad. See, it's basically so quick. I mean, if, if, if you're obvious on the tablet version, you can take a picture of someone, it'll appear there. As soon as you've taken a snapshot of them, it will appear there, and you just assign it to whichever channel you want to assign it to. So that's the feature I used to create that little uh, um, illustration yesterday. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um so today, as I promised yesterday, we're going to talk more about the other features that are available um, on this particular uh, mixer, this particular device. Uh, thankfully today, my hay fever isn't as bad, so I'm not as uh, clogged up as I was yesterday. Um, but it is some of this side, so, you know, uh, hay fever does kick in. Right, so, um, as promised, we're going to look at the other features. Yesterday we went straight into routing. I'm going to come out of that for now. We're going to go into the FX channel. Now, with Master Fader 5, which is what I'm still currently using, and this is obviously 5.1, uh, with Master Fader 5.1 uh, and 5, you get four FX uh, processors. Whereas with some of the previous versions, I think you only get two and three. Uh, I think the DL32R offered three. Um, but anyone who's upgraded to Master Fader 5.1, should now take advantage of all four uh, engines rather than just having the three available. Now before I go into this uh, section here, I just want to quickly go into a channel. We'll go over here to our trusted channel and you'll find me every single time clicking underneath the channel because my other digital mixer, um, that's how you get into the dynamic processing. Right, so um, on each channel uh, you will have your dedicated four FX uh, um, meters, so to speak, uh, faders here, and you can adjust how much of that particular FX is coming into this channel. And don't make the rookie mistake that um, I made um, once, uh, maybe more than once, <laughs> where I've turned it up on the channel and I'm thinking, oh, these effects are sounding brilliant, it's amazing and the, the main effects uh, volumes were down here so I wasn't actually listening to any effects I don't know why my brain was telling me that I could hear a change and I was like man this delay is really fire and then halfway through the event I realized hang on a second these are down and when I finally turned them up I got the boomiest reverb because I'd really whacked the volumes up I had the boomiest reverb and the, the I think I still have a video um, and if I get Actually, if I get enough likes, I might share the clip. Um, I might actually share the clip. Uh, but yeah, I turned the um, the I eventually turned the effects up, and I realized the whole time, uh, whilst I was celebrating how great they sounded and how good my mix was, there was no effects at all. So always remember to come to the main effects bus um, and just turn the actual volume up. You'll start to see some signal there, and then you can go back to the channel that you were on. Okay. Uh, you'll get used to it for not by now. 
and then obviously turn how much of that particular effect you want within this channel um, and then you know you, you, you can quickly um, assign that across obviously one tip to, 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 to take into consideration with uh, FX uh, that you want on your channels uh, always set them up to post fade now there are scenarios where pre fade would be required um, but always set them up to post fade and the reason why I'm saying that is um, when you lower your main fader uh, on that particular channel um, when you lower that you want a situation where um, the effects are also lowered as well if you set it to pre-fade you'll lower the channel but the sound of the effects will continue to boom in the background until you go to the to here and lower it there or if you mute it uh, or until you you lower it from your main um, the main bus which we were looking at a second ago um, the one I forgot to turn up so you don't want to have to lower a fader then go to each channel where that particular effect is in, is in place and start to try and lower it there um, you just want to get on and do it now obviously with master fader 5.1 uh, they've given you quick access to these channels here whereas before on master fader 5 if you were here or if you were inside an actual channel you'd have to come out come here scroll all the way across maybe miss it come back and then start fiddling with it whereas if you were in the actual channel now as we were again I have to go and click above let me go into the here right so if you're there rather than having to come out first and then scroll across da 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 you can just click on that and boom you can bring it down so this is uh, improvement yep the only thing they need to change is that whole a a x a x a one or a two uh, stuff that they put on on here. Um, so if you rename this, it'll say a one, and then it'll put whatever name you've put. If they can just get rid of that a one, a two, a three stuff, and just leave it as what you know what we've chosen. At least we, we no longer have to see that. You know, the one of the purposes of rename you want to be able to rename it. Uh, but anyway, that's just my my uh, my own little personal gripe. Um, yeah four engines so bear in mind you've got to turn the the volume of that uh, effect up in the channel and you get to choose how much of that effect is, is going to um, affect that channel you have to turn turn the main uh, effect volume up okay um, and then you know the cool thing about this is like with if you work in the studio you know that you can pan your effects so if you've got a delay or you can do some really cool things but you can pan your effects you know you can send maybe the, the the plate reverb all the way to one side and balance it out with something on the other side maybe some delay um, and then you get some really cool combinations uh, which is pretty cool and obviously master fader keeps in line with that uh, back in the old analog days you'd have to send your effects processor to a, a fader first to have the ability to EQ the effect or to pan it, etc. So, you know, these guys thought of everything. Now, at the minute, we don't have any that we've chosen. <laughs> so, we're going to go into the processor and we're going to choose them. Now, how, how Master Fade has worked this, has, have worked, how Mackie have worked this out is um, you can see that it grays out a bit darker when you select it. So, we'll go into the first one and then you come into the select here or you can choose a preset obviously we don't want to work with presets we want to see how this thing works we've also got the mute there which is fine so we're going into here obviously you start off with none the first section of FX that you have are sort of reverb FX the second ones are delay and as you can see the colors there and the last ones are hang on a second have we been robbed here give me a second give me a second I don't think this is right. Hang on. I'll show you what I mean. So we've only got f one, two, three, four, five. I'm pretty sure there were more of them on Master Fader 5. Um, give me a second. Nope. It's the same. 
it just looks and feels like they're more when I'm looking at the tablet version on Master Fader 5 and I think I know why the uh, the actual size of each uh, uh, each one of these slots is a lot big smaller sorry on Master Fader 5 than it is on the on this version of Master Fader 5.1 so I think I was just looking at it and thinking, man, there's, it looks like there's less, uh, but it's actually the same and they're all in the same position as well. So that's just a little bit of trickery that my eyes have played on me. Um, but yeah, it's just getting used to Master Fader 5.1 uh, for me. So, like I said, you've got three sections here. The first section, which is in red, is your reverb section. And they were kind enough to, to label all of these, uh, to color all of these red, so that you could see at a glance that uh, this is some sort of a reverb. Uh, the delays are all blue, and the um, the others are all sort of uh, purple. <laughs> okay? So, um, once you've selected your effect, I think, what did we click on here? Plate reverb. Okay, I like plate reverb. It's quite nice. See, once you've selected your effect, then all of a sudden you get all your parameters, and you can do a heck of a lot with any particular effect that you choose. You can change the dampening, the decay, etc. Now obviously you need to know how to utilize that particular effect in order for, you, for it to be effective for you. So it's it's a bit of a learning experience where you'll have to go away and um, I like to use, uh, what is it called, sound on sound. On sound. Um, I think this is a website called Sound on Sound I like to use. And they, they have some really, really decent ways of explaining things. Uh, for me, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, you can literally go away and, and Google uh, what is ER roll-off. And you'll find the information on there. And if it's applicable to whatever it is you're doing at the time, then yeah, you can utilize that particular feature um, within the actual uh, setting that you're doing. Now, if you're a complete beginner, you don't really know what you're doing. You can take advantage of uh, the presets that are here, and then tweak them to your to your liking once they're on there, um, or once you've selected them. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of different uh, presets. I'm just going to move my camera a little bit higher. Sorry, not my camera, my my microphone a little bit higher. Um, so yeah, you can uh, take advantage of the presets if you want. Um, but as you can see, there's, there's a hell of a lot that you can do uh, here. And I'm just going to go back to page one um, and just show you this again for the reverbs. So you can have some sort of a reverb already there. You can have some sort of a, a, a delay. Um, let's do a ping pong delay. And you know, you've got the tap left and right. Um, you've got uh, the different features above. Um, and again, the preset you can store presets. You know, like how we, we learned with the uh, EQ and uh, the uh, um, the compressors and the gates. You can store and then recall these presets as and when you need them. Um, you know, if you have a particular singer, you go around with these mixes are very portable. Or if you decide to take the mixer into a studio and you know that you're using the same device that you use for live, um, you can just take the same mixer in and use the same effects that you know work, uh, the same presets, sorry, that you know work for this particular individual that you're working with. So that's actually quite ad advantageous if you, if you want to do something in your church where uh, you're doing a live, uh, live album recording, for example, and then later on you need to go back and track, uh, you know, track them, then you've got that advantage there. Particularly if you're taking your, your, uh, your, your signals into your uh, door, as post um, DSP, um, then you know <laughs> there's a lot of cool things that you can actually do. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, what some some people do with studio work uh, is they will set they will they'll create two channels uh, if you can for the cer for the certain things, and then they'll say, okay, uh, channel one I'll root. We learned about rooting yesterday. I'll, I'll use the first channel and both say we are using channel one for a microphone. So channel one uh, is being used as a mic and we're also using channel one as a uh, um, to record. So what I can do is I can say okay I'm using channel one for a mic pre uh, preamp into that but I also want channel 12 
uh, sorry, channel 1. I also want to send, use channel 12, sorry, for that same uh, purpose. And then you can, um, where is it? Right, so you can then choose to, um, to have different settings on channel 12 and send channel 12 elsewhere. Uh, one of the cool things you can do, for example, say for example you're, you're the singer who's on stage wants to hear a mix on their voice that doesn't sound good out of the front of house. You can utilize channel 12 uh, for that, do all the EQ settings within channel 12 and then send channel 12 to their monitor and you can keep channel 1 coming out of front of house and you can set up a completely different mix for channel 1. At least that way they get what they want. If you've got the channels to spare on the desk, then you know that way they get what they want. Sometimes you have uh, individuals that are a little bit particular. Some drummers are like, "Oh, I want a bit more boom on my kick, and I want a bit more this." And you know, obviously from a, from their perspective, that's what they want to listen to. Uh, but for the main mix, you don't want it to be all drums. So you can sort of assign certain uh, channels, uh, free channels, sorry, um, and patch them in this way so that you can send the mix that they want to their monitor and you can keep the mix that you want for your front of house as front of house. And obviously because these channels can be named or whatever, you can clearly name the channel how you want it. And uh, yeah, you can give them, uh, obviously they'll have app control if they're going in here. Uh, and they can control how much of their kick they, they get. And they can also get a, a customized EQ setting. Um, so if you want to sort of please your musicians or your singers, uh, you can do that and be a hero. Um, but yeah, so with the uh, effects, uh, I'm just going to quickly select the last, something from the last group uh, here. We will go for some mono chorus, and we will also go for, what should we go for? Um, a flanger? Tremolo. Let's go for a phaser. Phaser is always good to have. Um, See, so yeah, as as you as you can see, again, you've got different options to do whatever you want. The presets are already there, and you can store certain settings. If if, if something worked really well, you can store that. Boom. Right. So we've got all these effects set now, and we've chosen what we want. Um, and obviously, here where it was saying none, 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 we now actually have. Um, the items we've picked there. Um, you always have the option to name them as well. So, you know, you could put v reverb. Uh, some people just call it verb. Um, you know, you can put delay. You know, and again, you don't have to stick with the colors that are there. You can change these colors to whatever color you want. You can have uh, different icons. Um, notice how I didn't use the quick assign, uh, but you can have different icons for for those things. Uh, I don't think they come with a preset icon for reverb and delay, but you know you can pick whatever you want. You don't have to um, sort of. S it's it's your choice. Nobody's going to come and look over your shoulder. Well, actually, there are some people who will do that. Um, <laughs> nobody's going to come and look over your shoulder and say, "Gosh, why did you pick that icon?" Uh, have whatever you want, set it up the way you want. So yeah, you can you can pretty much do whatever it is you want to do with your uh, channels there. Um, and the cool thing is, um, once you set up your your effects, okay. I was doing sound at another place, and 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 a guy said, "Look, can you make my my voice sound really boomy?" Lots of speakers actually, they, they'll tell you that. You know, if they're preachers or you know, they'll say, "Hey, give me just give me a bit more." on the low frequencies, I, I want to sound like I'm an authority. Um, and I've had that quite a few times. And so what I did is, for this particular um, uh, day, I, I actually went into one of the effects, and I just set something up to give them a bit more bass. And that was the only thing that particular FX engine was doing. Um, and, you know, I worked it up in the monitor for them as much as they liked it. Obviously still keeping a clean mix in the front of house um, and thing. And, you know, they're none the wiser. They're happy. Everyone else is happy. Um, you, know, you can't really uh, complain or argue, you know. Um, but it's important that when you're doing a mix, uh, some people might ask you to do some things 
and you know for a fact that that's going to kill, uh, particularly if they're speaking, and you want everybody to be able to clearly hear every word that's been spoken. It's quite important. Uh, sometimes their uh, personal preferences may not actually, uh, you know, it might it may work aesthetically, uh, but it would mean that people will only capture 30% of what it is the message they were supposed to capture. I'd much rather have a situation that people are sat there, and you can tell just on this note. Um, so if you're doing this for church and you've got congregation sat there if you watch the people who are in the congregation if they're mostly sat down listening to somebody speak and they're sat at ease everybody's paying attention uh, everybody's focused on what they're hearing it means you've gotten everything right okay because the more clearer you can make your mix the more easier for it to be taken in um, the less the brain has to work so the brain can focus and pay attention more but if there's noise and there's all sorts of nonsense in the mix and there's static and there's feedback, the brain has to sift through all this 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 this, this, this stuff unnecessarily that's there um, to be able to actually just listen to the words, process them, and for that person to be able to do all of that, mind fatigue will set in a lot more quicker. Which is why when you were in school and you had teachers that had you know either a <coughs> scratchy voice or whatever. You didn't really pay much attention, uh, but if you had teachers that had very smooth, uh, calm voices, you'd often find that those are the teachers that were the best, and you always wonder, what is it? Is it, their te is it that they're good? I mean, this is a young teacher, they've got very little experience, but they seem to be a better teacher than, you know, and everyone is saying, yeah, they're a great teacher. Sometimes it was only due to the fact that they spoke more clearly, um, and, you know, maybe the, the classroom they were in was more better soundproofed than the other ones, you know? And that's what you're aiming for as a sound engineer. It's your responsibility to ensure that the people who are listening, particularly if it's a church congregation, um, if they're listening to the, to the, to the worship, uh, they're listening to the worship mix, uh, they're listening to the live stream, uh, some of the things that will keep them engaged is how well you handle your mix. So don't feel like you have to be bullied into you know, when someone says, oh, I want some boom, and when they speak on the mic, you know, there's some places you go and the mic is just, <laughs> it sounds like it's in a boxing match. Uh, and, and some people are like, oh, that's how I want it, because it, it shows. Yeah, aesthetically, it might give, you know, certain sort of feelings to the people who are listening. But at the end of the day, if you ask them what they've actually retained, zero. Okay? Uh, they might retain 25% or 15%. And it's a shame because what was being spoken about was quite important. Um, but anyway, um, with the effects, play around with them. Definitely do your research on some of the aspects that are here. Learn what they are. The good thing about what, what Mackie did is, you know, they used uh, industry standard uh, terminology uh, within the features on their uh, on their engine processes, just in general within the mixer. So it's not too difficult for you to just Google that uh, waveform or Google and read about what it is, see if it applies to what you're looking for, and apply it, you know, utilize it. If It's a tool that's there for you to use if you need it. But FX, effects are self, ex well, they are kind of self-explanatory, and it's at the end of the day, sometimes it's trial. Uh, one thing I'll say to you is don't mix with your ears, don't mix with your eyes. Um, and yeah, let's move on. Right, I'm going to leave this till last. Um, we're going to come into here. We're going to look at the settings very quickly. Now, for a lot of these settings that are in here, most people will tell you, I don't need to change them. I don't. Some people say, I don't know what they mean. Uh, some people will tell you, look, if it's, if it's applicable to you and you need to make the change, I'll always say, make the change. Uh, but if it isn't, and it works fine for you, leave it. Uh, but these are just some of the settings you have control over here on the left. Uh, peak hold, meter clip hold, talkback mode, etc. And you can change these parameters as and when you need to. Personally, I've never had to change these parameters, so I'm fine. Um, here you go. So, version 5.1 lets you export your uh, presets, it lets you export your uh, shows, it lets you export your information to back it up, okay? 
uh, version 5, Master Painter 5, doesn't. When you click on that button, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, take full advantage of this and back up your, uh, your, uh, back up your, uh, your, your, what are these, <laughs> what, what were these, we, presets, we, presets. The good thing about this is it's, it categorizes them. So, you know, you've got your shows and then it'll tell you what shows you have. You've got your presets for your equalizer, for example. And we set these up, I think, in the first or second video. And, yep, it'll save those compressor and it categorizes them for you. So you're not sort of sifting through loads of different things to try and work out, was this a equalizer preset I saved or was this a compressor preset? What is it? Uh, you can back everything up, which is great. Um, so always remember to back your settings up, okay? Next feature. Now this is this is the this is a killer feature. Now the first time I got my my Mackie, I was trying to work out. Fair enough, there's the option here to limit access, but it didn't give me anywhere where it showed me the connected devices and how I can limit the access on the different devices. I can click on there. This is the main left and right, um, and then if I come out of this, you'll see that I no longer have uh, the main left and right. It's gone. It used to be above the AUX one. So I could click on something and remove it from my device, but as the main controller of the device, I wanted a way of limiting someone else's device. So what you do is you actually do it on the individual's advice. So as you know, these Mackies come with an inbuilt router, which you can connect to it as a wi through your Wi-Fi. So it pops up as one of your Wi-Fi signals, you connect to it, you connect your device, and you're in as long as you know the password. Um, so anyone with the password and anyone who connects to your mixer will be able to actually get in and start making changes to your mix. It's good if you want to have a few people keeping an eye on things just in case you need to nip out or something happens, you know that there's somebody there to back you up and make the changes that need to be done whilst you're not there. However, you don't want to allow a situation where uh, someone who's, who's doing their own personal monitor mix uh, has access to make changes to uh, some very critical things like your shows, etc. Because they'll wipe all your shows clean, and then <laughs> you'll be stuck. You know, they'll wipe all your settings clean, etc. So what I do uh, for the other people is, um, first of all, I'll do all on, okay? And the two things that, if they're doing an AUX mix, uh, they need access to is, number one, they need access to devices, okay? And they also need access to... Uh, to their aux, everything else can be grayed out unless you want to give them. Say they've got a stereo, um, they've got a stereo mix for their uh, for their for themselves on their in ears. Uh, then you can give them access to pan because they'll need that, uh, and then they can pan things. You know, with for example, I always mention drummers. Uh, drummers uh, they ask for a lot uh, generally, um, so the ability to pan is one of the things a drummer might need, and it's pretty obvious why they need them. I mean, they've got eight microphones on their kit. Uh, they can't be hearing everything straight. It doesn't sound too good. And when they don't go in here, they're used to hearing a nice, because obviously they're playing the drums. If the tom is on the right and they hit it, they'll hear it on the right. So, you know, you might want to give them a stereo mix if you can spare the channels and give them the ability to pan. So that's a, a something you'd need to do. But then what you do is on that individual's device, you go in there and you stick in a pin of your choice. So I'm putting in 0000, zero, zero, zero just for illustration purposes. And what will happen is when they go in, oh no, it's not, oh yeah, yeah, device is what they need, yeah, because they need to be able to select the device when they log in. So yeah, when they go in, they've got this page here, and they can try and fiddle around with this, but unless they, they know the code, they're not getting in. Um, and they've got some access to, you know, help and some quick tips, etc. that Mackie have put here, some guides, etc. Um, which don't really do anything for the mix. Um, and here you go. So they can see um, their fader, and they can, they can control the different items on their fader. Um, some of you are thinking, hang on a second, we gave them access to pan. Why isn't pan there? It's because you have to come into here and say, we don't want to use left and right mute, um, and you have to come into here and say you want to use prefade. Hang on, no, sorry. Yeah. 
use left no we don't want to use left and right mute oh sorry this is a, a mono channel uh, I should have uh, copied these across so that they're stereo in order to give pad we need to set up the stereo so I'll quickly do it just for illustration purposes So I'll link aux1 over to aux2, there we go, now you've got pan, then you go back into uh, your settings, access limits, put everything on, give them access to aux1 and 2, give them access to pan, and give them access to devices, this allows them to log in every single time. Um, and then password protected. And you put the pin in twice so there can be no mistake. Okay. Now when you come here, you'll see the pan feature um, for them. Um, so if this is our drummer, you'll be able to pan. Um, they will get, uh, uh, they'll be able to mute their individual channels themselves and it won't affect any other mute, so it won't affect if you're live streaming as well, it won't affect your live stream mute, it won't affect your main mute, uh, they can just shut whoever they don't want off or mute any channels they don't want to see. Um, and obviously they've got control over their main volume and they can mute their main volume as well. I mean that's pretty much how you restrict access, they've got nothing else that they can do here. They can't change the names, uh, they, can't, they can't do anything else, they can't change the icons, um, but they can just see pretty much whatever it is they need to see and uh, do whatever they need to do for their own mix. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's that's pretty much uh, your access limits. So I'm going to come back into the access limits and release myself. Zero, 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 zero. And boom. All on. Uh, all off, sorry. <laughs> there we go. One of the, the selling points of this, I was, I, was, I was speaking to another pastor and he was, he was asking I was telling him that you know you, you can actually log in yourself if you hear something you don't like and start making changes and his eyes lit up so you can tell in his church <laughs> there's probably a few things that come out um, I presume during praise and worship uh, that he sometimes thinks I've invited somebody over oh my gosh that person is singing and he puts his head down and I think I <laughs> he's probably thinking I want to go in there and turn that person down um, I'd always say give for people like that, definitely limit access to certain things because uh, they'll accidentally mess things up for you. Um, next section. Uh, this is a sort of uh, utility section, uh, if I can use that word. Um, but we spoke in the first video where if you are, say, just for argument's sake, you're in here and you're soloing what, um, you know, you've got some wireless headphones, you've plugged the receiver into the, the mixer, and you're standing at the back and you're just soloing what's going into this particular aux mix um, and you're trying to hear you know, something is, is this you know, is, it, is there noise going to my live stream is it coming from the uh, the cable the jack to jack cable on the keyboard you know I want to solo the keyboard channels just to hear if I can hear a hum and a buzz that I need to kill you know whatever it is you're looking to do and then someone taps you on the shoulder and says oh can you change something in the mains you quickly go to the mains you make the adjustment and then you know you're somewhere else you may be in a channel, uh, and then all of a sudden you think, oh, I can only hear solo, but you've forgotten what you soloed. This will light up saying that there is something that's been soloed, and you can literally just come in and clear the solo, um, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, and I like that. That's very uh, convenient. Um, the uh, You've got the ability to mute the effects from here. It's just like a utility sort of channel. And remember we put a delay on, I think it was FX2, and you've got that delay tap there. So you can actually do that from here. Um, this is, this, this threw me off once. So for your monitors, uh, you can send a delayed response to your monitors. Now, there are scenarios where this would be possible. Um, I was listening to a guy called Dave Ratt. Uh, he is one of the greatest sound technicians that I've ever known. 
and he was describing um, his setup for a concert where I think they had several hundred thousand people in attendance and he's like look if you're in a room that's you know x by x meters wide and x by x meters long you can get away with just putting two speakers at the front one on the left one at the right and you can pan and people will be able to hear it and you can safely cover the uh, the entirety of that specific room with those two speakers he says but if you're at a concert and there's 300,000 people there or 400 500,000 people there and this guy does uh, sound for um, uh, bands like Metallica uh, I know he does a lot with Red Hot Chili Peppers when they're on tour across the world he was saying to be able to successfully cover that kind of distance with the stages they use you have to have some sort of delay features or some sort of systems that are applying delay to certain speakers because if you're standing 400 meters away uh, obviously the person who's 400 meters ahead of you next to the stage is going to be hearing the sound a lot more quicker than you are and sometimes they're saying they will be about you know 200 meters away from the stage and they want to be able to mix something at 200 meters away but they're getting a delayed signal so how do you cover patches of of, of an area without some sort of delay uh, being used to ensure that the sound is distributed evenly and somebody who's standing on this side can hear both left and right at the same time as somebody who's standing 400 meters uh, to the right and 150 meters back and yeah it got me thinking I was like wow okay so there are abilities to send delayed uh, signals to uh, to your monitor uh, if you need to to ensure that you know when the person is on stage and they, they're asking for a response from you know from the, the congregation or from the people and you know, it's, it's quite a big venue etc and you need to delay certain signals going to and from for it to be a bit more easy on them you've got the options to do so um, you've got the talk back feature now <sighs> this feature I may not be too keen on but if you want to talk back there is a feature where you can go into your uh, routing select the channel that you want to send your talk back to um, and where you want to talk back to so your mains or whatever and you can come in here and, and pick your talk back mic uh, here and you know you say you plug that into channel 30 oh it is actually set to channel 32 yes yeah, so say you've plugged it into channel 32 and you're walking around with this wireless talk back mic um, in order for you to utilize it you first have to come into here uh, this controls the volume level uh, you have to come into here go into talkback uh, decide okay I want to speak to the, the drummer who's on in here what did we send the drummer to one and two right so the drummer's in here is on one and two then you have to come into here adjust the volume level appropriately because if you're speaking to a bunch of singers who are standing on stage who have monitors in front of them uh, you might want to whack the volume up so that they can hear you over all the other noise but if you're going to speak into someone's in-ears you're going to have to drop that volume back because once you start speaking into the mic you could blow their eardrums so and then you have to press talk then you can speak into your talkback mic it avoids accidentally you know talking into somebody's ears when you don't need to but it is a bit of a, a faff where you have to okay who do I want to talk to Did I, by the time you want to give that instruction maybe the thing that you want to talk to them about is completely gone you no longer need it so you have to work out who are you on sub five okay uh, not so actually this is subgroup we, we, we did it aux one and two <laughs> yeah so you have to figure out who's on which aux click on it come through here make sure you've got an appropriate volume then hit that and talk and then let go uh, but the feature is there so I'm not gonna knock uh, Mackie for the way in which they've set it up uh, because there is a feature to do so um, but it is a few clicks to get to so it can be a little bit annoying right finally talk about the shows now initially when I got the Mackie um, and I was going through it I just simply thought if I came into here you know you've got offline shows if I came in here and I said oh, you also got the export and import feature here uh, this is an N5 but yeah I thought okay we'll set up a new show uh, we'll call it live stream stream and you know, 
it's been set and this is the mix we have we'll load it up we're, we're all good right wrong okay so we're currently in an unnamed uh, show so let's just call this uh, we're on YouTube right let's just call it YouTube <laughs> okay uh, we're currently in, in this uh, YouTube show at the minute as you can see it's come through here it's called YouTube you can leave yourself a whole bunch of notes uh, you know day one uh, added compression Be aware that drummer is noisy. Uh, you know, whatever it is you want to add for the show. You did sound check yesterday. You made some notes for yourself and you thought, mm, let me leave myself some notes for tomorrow. Uh, and you leave those notes there. Or you did the uh, sound check because <coughs> the main engineer wasn't there the night before. And you've left some notes for them so that they can have a read and they can see, oh, I didn't do what we agreed. I've done something different. This is one. And I thought at this stage it, it was saved. So I'd you know, shut my device down and that was it. I'd disappear. I did it wrong because it's the snapshots that you recall in order to recall all the channel settings. The show just sort of saves the overall show. But the snapshots uh, is what saves the individual settings on the on the on the channels, you know, whatever you've created, etc. So you have to go into there, uh, like if you go into this, you you know, store a snapshot, and then you name this YouTube. Okay. Um, so you're gonna name that YouTube. That's what's there. Now, if I went in here and I hit uh, hang on. Yeah, so I'm going to replace that so I know it's saved what we currently have. So if I went into here and I hit recall this, bam, and I come through here, remember how we'd set something up on channel one and two? We had a violin and uh, um, I think it was a male vocalist, and we'd done some colors there, uh, and then we'd linked over aux one into two. And we played around with some of the volume settings. Uh, da, da, da. We made a few changes here and there. I think we went into channel one and so I'm still clicking underneath. Uh, but we went into channel one. I'm just showing you that the, f the, the changes we made to the effects and stuff are no longer here. Okay. If you come back into snapshots and you hit recall, don't hit replace. Because what if you hit re if, you, if we'd hit replace at this stage? What would happen is it would take what's currently on there, which is blank, and replace what we just saved. You get it? So don't make that mistake. Um, and this is why it's always good to back everything up, because if you back it up to your laptop or to a, a memory stick or something, you can always plug that in and get all your settings back. Um, but yeah, if we recall this snapshot, all of a sudden we were still in channel one. Our, fe our settings came back, as you can see. What we'd set up before is there. So that's how you save it and you can always see at the top right hand corner it will actually say YouTube um, so you know that you're in the YouTube snapshot now in a previous video we were talking about doing an event where say you're at your church and you have a situation where you've got a few other teams that have come from different parts of the country uh, different uh, parts of the city to come and also do performances at your church and let's just say for argument's sake everybody successfully came for sound check the day before uh, and you were able to set everybody up correctly. This doesn't always happen. You end up having to do it on the fly on the day, uh, which is really annoying. But let's just say for argument's sake, we're going down a happy route. We've managed to set up all our shows, set everything up. What One of the things you can do is for each and every uh, team, or let's call them band, uh, for each and every band, you can set them up using these snapshots. So for example, let's just say for argument's sake, our first performance that's going on is someone with a violin and the, another person singing. And that's it. So we've set all the EQ, we've done everything, da 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 da. We'll save that as YouTube. <laughs> okay? That's what the group is called. Next group are going to come up and um, these guys have... 
they have what do they have <laughs> okay so they let's just go to our quick I love this quick assign ah right, someone on a horn we've got a guitarist another male vocalist um, what else we've got a piano stick the piano there an acoustic guitar so we'll take that I don't know if anybody of you have noticed this but can you see the the actual guitars here so I know because I build basses that's a P bass and that's a jazz bass and when I do the more bigger events that I go for if I'm playing bass I'll always take two basses with me uh, sometimes even three and one of the reasons is there might be some songs that I'm doing that I can't really justify playing them on a jazz bass I won't get the best out of it. So I'll need to take a different type of bass with me for that song. And what will often happen is they'll give me two two channels on their mixer and they'll let me uh you know do one for each bass. Uh the other bass will just be as a backup. It'll be on the stage, strapped, everything cord in just in case I snap a string or something happens, then I can just swap one jazz bass for another if that's the main bass I'm using. Uh, I can just quickly swap them around and I don't have to start changing strings on the spot. So I'll often do that. But yeah, if, if you if you are the sound engineer and you notice, oh, this bassist has brought a precision bass and a, a jazz bass, uh, then yeah, you can actually give them two channels and you can assign those channels, mix them, and you can actually put the appropriate icon for that. And they've even given you three sets of different guitars, so rhythm, electric, and lead. Then you've got acoustic guitar. They they thought of everything. I think this is a cello, <laughs> um, but they did think of, of pretty much everything. This is really convenient. I like that. So anyway, we were talking about how I'm not going to do colors. But we're talking about how this is our second group that are going to do something, and it's a dude with a guitarist, uh, a violinist, and a uh, oh, it's, this is meant to be horns, but okay, <laughs> horns, and a piano. Okay, so I'll come back in here hit that, say group 2, okay, and hit replace, okay, and then we'll have a third team, I'm just doing this, uh, we're actually just going to name this now, I'm just doing this to show you something, I just want to illustrate something for you, group 3, okay, and for group 3, they pretty much have the same things, uh, but then they've decided to uh, they've decided to also throw a trumpet in um, and a floor tom uh, and they're using a click track <laughs> okay I'm not going to do colors and images for this right okay so they they're doing that okay then I come in here I hit replace right so I'm in my my concert and the first group show up and you can see them walking up to the stage I simply hit recall I hit yes and it just gives me the mix for my first team which is just that they do their thing the crowd is going crazy everyone's going wild the second group are walking up everyone's celebrating they're clapping da 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 me as a sound man easier job of the day boom I recall that why is it giving me the same thing as the first group? Oh, I've just replaced it, haven't I? I've oh, hang on. Okay, that's the first one. Okay, I think I, I think I've replaced something instead of recording it. Let's go to the third one. Ah, this has a bit more. So yeah. <coughs> I just wanted to illustrate how you can switch between the two and I'm, I'm so glad I did a third one now because I somehow messed up that second one but yeah you, sh you can just switch between them w at ease and everything is ready everything is set for you you don't need to worry too much about what's going on and this is a brilliant uh, f way of utilizing your snapshots um, and this will all be under the YouTube concert and when it's done it's done cool thing is if you ever have any of those teams coming back to your venue 
and you've still pretty much got the same gear, you've left yourself notes to say which mics they used, etc. Da 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 da. And you know these guys probably come back regularly. Rather than when they come back next time, you have to do a whole new mix altogether. You can just recall this any single time, and you know that it's set, um, and you're set for life. So that's that's a really really good advantage. Even if they come with a slightly different team, it's easier to uh, set them up with a, a, an actual set setup uh, using one that has already worked before, because you just have a few things that you need to tweak to it. Um, to get yourself ready. So this, this gives you a, a lot of ease. Uh, for a church, what you can do is you can set maybe one up for, let me just recall this quick, because this only has two items on it. <laughs> this could be prayer, prayer service, where somebody is going to be on a microphone on a Friday night, and you're just going to have a keyboard, a single keyboard player playing. Uh, and that could be prayer service. So if you have people in the church, and you don't want to always constantly have to be there, you can just sort of give them the password, say go in there, go into snapshots, recall prayer service, and just pick up this, this specific mic, and the keyboard player can go, all the settings are set. Uh, the next one could be Friday service, where you know if you get a few more people that come in, they use a bit of a bigger band, and you can set that up, and they can just recall those settings. Fair enough, there isn't anybody who actually does sound, who's actually physically going to be there on site, but you've left them with a good enough platform for them to start off. And because you've already put restrictions on their devices, uh, they can't change anything major. But at least they can adjust the volumes if they need to. Okay? Uh, maybe the main speakers come in, their voice is a bit groggy, like what mine was yesterday. And they just need a bit more volume just to help them. Uh, then, you know, they can at least make those adjustments. But you don't always have to physically be on site if this belongs to a church, for example. So... This is another va advantage uh, of doing this. Um, so you can utilize th that particular section there. Um, other than that, you know, you can always go into your offline shows or like what I do when I'm uh, helping people out. I will spend the evening uh, creating a whole new show, setting up different channels. You know, I'll ask them how many singers, how many this, da da da. And I'll do all the work the night before. And then I know when I get there on the day, all I need to worry about is actually doing the EQ the different people, I've already set the channels up, and deal with any other thing I need to do, deal with gain, etc. And we're good to go. This saves me time on setup, and I'm not doing everything from scratch. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much that. The section I, I said I'm going to talk about last uh, is this section here. Now bear in mind, for these videos, I've been doing them on Master Fader 5.1, and I've been doing it on my laptop, okay? Um, this laptop isn't connected to my DL32 because I'm still running Master Fader 5 on that. Okay, I'm not, I've not yet upgraded to 5.1. So for this section, I'm going to need to bring my actual tablet across, which has been complaining to me that it's running out of battery, but tough. <laughs> uh, we're busy, we're working. And let me just quickly switch across, if I can. to fader. There we go. There we go. Right, so this is the section we were going to talk about here. Now, you can see from my device, if I can just get that to like you can see from my device that we have, under detected mixers, we actually have one down here in green, and I've called this live surface. It's not very clear from where you are, but that's the name I've given to my device. And you can see from here that um, it's connected right at the top there, and it's got the name live surface one. And there's various information about the network that it's connected to. Da da da. I'm connected directly to the actual um, inbuilt Wi-Fi uh, for this. Now, you have uh, the uh, settings. Let me just check. Yeah, no password. Um, you have all your settings here. 
Okay, you've got access point, external router, and the Wi-Fi client. And the thing I wanted to talk about about this, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be on it now, because uh, I can't show you this uh, on the other one. But I'll, I'll just bring this down here for now. The cool thing about this thing is, you have various options on how you can set up your DL32 to work. Now you can hook it into an existing router that you have via the Ethernet port. And what you can do is you can tell that router, uh, you can tell this device to also bring in the Wi-Fi signal. So anyone who connects their phone or anything to your DL32 can also benefit from using the internet connection that is uh, on that actual router as well. So they can have both Wi-Fi to go on the internet to browse as well as access to this. If you just simply connect a phone or a device to the DL32S, it will connect, but there'll be no internet. And that means they have to turn off their data and just connect via Wi-Fi to your device and not have data on their, f on their tablet or their phone. Um, so you've got the option of doing that if you want to utilize the device as an external router uh, and make it the actu an actual Wi-Fi client as well. Um, you can set up passwords in this section as well for your uh, change the existing password that comes with the device to something you want. You can rename the actual device as well. So there's a lot of options that you can uh, utilize when utilizing this particular mixer here. Uh, so just bear that in mind that it is, as I keep saying, fully customizable. Um, there are a lot of options available to you for this uh, particular mixer. But I just wanted to quickly just give you an idea of what that would look like if you don't actually own if you don't actually own one of these mixers and you just wanted to have a quick glance as to what it is you'd be looking at, then that's pretty much it. See, I own the DL32S, uh, but if you've got the R or you've got the 1608, the features are similar. They're not going to be exactly the same, uh, but you know it's there thereabouts. Okay. Right. So now, this is uh, a <laughs> this is this is a, an idea of the mix that we're getting now, and as you can see, um, so I've got that keyboard there. Uh, that's this piano that you can see in there. Uh, I've also I also hook up my my bass guitar often. Uh, I haven't set up a channel for my lead guitar, uh, but you know if I'm messing around at home, um, and back in the time before Corona. You know, people would want to come over and have a jam. You could all sort of jam and go in here and not have to m make noise for the neighbors. Um, so yeah, it's 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 quite helpful in that sense. But you can see an idea, and <laughs> I'm always having to mess around with the uh, the gate feature here. You see how that gate shuts every single time. We spoke about gating on one of the videos, and I was saying to you the gate will close when what you've requested to put in isn't there. Look at the, how that red bar here at the top is just going to go down and shut. And the reason why I'm doing that is I've got this microphone pinned to my t-shirt and sometimes it makes a lot of rustling sounds and you know, I was have to adjust the gate. But this is just a bit of insight into what I've set up. You can see the compressor and the gate uh, working. Uh, the compressor not, not, so, not as much, um, but in fairness I'm not really making that much noise. If anything, people keep saying to me, you could do with being a bit more louder. And this is the l for the live stream. So this is the channel. And this is the overall. So this is me speaking into the, uh, into the Mackie um, and coming out to you guys. And I'm streaming through, as you've seen, OBS. So I just wanted you to see that the stuff we've spoken about over the last few videos um, this is it in, in actual work. This is it in practice. It's it's working. It's something that actually works. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to hook up this device uh, and use it for studio work, um, believe it or not. So let me just knock that back. Do this. Come back here. Right, so we're back on uh, this particular page here. Um, so yeah, and I'm saying I'm going to show you how to hook up your device for studio work and what sort of settings you need to connect um, into your, uh, to what sort of routing settings you need to utilize to use this for studio. Because bear in mind, when you're utilizing it for studio, people will need to hear certain um, 
things from the door, so they'll need to hear themselves back if they're recording different takes. Uh, musicians might need to hear a click track that you have going or the metronome, um, and they'll need to be able to hear that from the door through the mixer, even though they're connected to the actual, excuse me, aux outputs. So there are settings that you need to put in place to ensure that that works, um, and that they're not just hearing themselves uh, through the actual mixer, they can also hear what's been pre-recorded in the door in order for them to carry on whatever work they're doing. So that's, that's another thing you need to think about. But I'll show you how to do all of that in the next video. Uh, for this video, I think we're, we're done for now. I think this sort of completes the general overview, and these videos have really been just an overview, so everybody can see roughly how this works, uh, roughly how Master Fader works, roughly how Mackie have put this together, roughly how you can utilize it for the purpose of live streaming. Um, I'll carry on doing the OBS videos as well, uh, just to show you how to interface everything from an OBS perspective and what sort of settings you need to apply there. That's a bit more straightforward uh, than this. Uh, but yeah, for the purpose of this video, guys, um, it's going to be goodbye for now. And I hope you have a good evening.